Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Laura and I'm going to be doing a plant updates video showing you all the changes that my plant have been through throughout the months. I'm just going to be giving you like, just showing you going through a few of my plants and just showing you uh, first off like a few new plants that I got. I got a few new allocations and colocasias and those are, I thought they would be like perfect for this spooky month and uh, these colocasias and allocasias are more rare because their leaves are darker in color. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you those um, and then I'm also going to be showing you a few of the other trailing plants that I have um, and just like updating you on you know how they've changed throughout the months and yeah and a lot of them I'm still like you know figuring out what um, even after they've grown so long and everything like that I still learned a lot because uh, even if it's like, oh, this plant has grown a lot of, like, has grown this long vine, it's still gonna go perfect for me because I probably did underwater it um, by a few days. So that's why a lot of the leaves browned off and yellowed, as you're going to see. First, I'm gonna be showing you the alligator plants that I got, and then uh, the colocasia plants. This is the first alligator plant that I got, and as you can see, it has, like, um, these really dark colored leaves that's just how they look and the back sides are more like a burgundry color and yeah i know like the color kind of reminds me of autumn as well so it's like yeah it just looks really rare so there we go that's just how the leaves look this is an alocasia so uh um there we go Yeah, and it's actually in a four inch planter, so, and I like to keep it in the mini greenhouse that I got from Ikea. The second alocasia that I got uh, is also in a four inch planter. Um, yeah, but it does have some like browning crispy leaves that are, that didn't make it, but I'm really hoping that it does get like new growth. Um, and then even this one's like getting crispy as well. This is how the, like its newest leaf looks like. That's just how it grew. And the other leaves are just crisping and like browning off. Um, that's that's its only leaf currently. And I do see like uh, kind of like new growth stemming, but it hasn't really, it's not really showing yet. It's just inside of the stems. And then for the colocasias, this one's in a smaller planter. And this is how the leaves look like. Uh, they're really dark in color, so yeah. This is a uh, colocasia. And you know, these leaves are like browning off and crispy, so. But I really hope it gets new growth soon. Uh, yeah, these are. The other colocasia that I got also has like crispy browning leaves as well, as you can see. And it does have these leaves here and hopefully it gets new growth. <laughs> so this is like, uh, one of the leaves there. The other leaf that looks like darker shaded than the first leaf that I showed you. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the Refitter Tetrasperma that I have growing on my wall. Um, this one actually was doing great for the like first few months that I had it on there growing on the wall. Uh, but then it did get really bare because a lot of the leaves started to brown and now it looks bare but it did grow all the way like there um, and it has like the smallest leaf like growing from there as you can see um, and i'm really thinking of just like pruning it and propagating it so maybe just like pruning it like here and then letting it regrow and then propagating all of that but i underwatered it uh i was watering it every 10 days uh, but maybe i had to water it every seven days or in between seven and ten days with refitter tetraspermas it could be tricky because if you don't water them at the perfect day then that their leaves are going to start yellowing especially if it's just like one vine and then it's going to start to get bare and then all you're going to do is like propagate it because it's not going to look like appealing if you are going to buy one make sure that it has a lot of vines um, that way if one vine starts to get bare you still have a lot of other vines that are still really lush this is a um, philodendron micans uh it has velvety leaves and i really love it 
it used to be a lot more lush it has so many leaves and then it just got really bare i'm thinking of like propagating this one well pruning it letting it regrow completely and then just like propagating all of this i already uh pruned a few other vines from it and i've already got it propagating and then behind me you're gonna see uh, string of hearts so this is a silver glory string of hearts and then this is just a uh, a different version of the string of hearts orange river i think yeah so this is what i keep here and it's like trailing um yeah and it's this one's uh just thriving it's loving it here this one also it really loves being right in this spot where it gets like a lot of bright and direct lighting so that's what I keep there. And then I have a marbled pothos vining on the walls. Uh, one of the vines got really bare, so I had to propagate that. So that one's not on there. I just have these. Uh, a lot of these vines are bare, like like the leaves are there, but then like all these are really bare. Anthurium plant that I have. One of them is yellowing and browning, so I'll have to prune this off. But it did have this new growth. So this, uh, that's the newest leaf and then it has this leaf and this one was like grew that way it had that defect on it and that's okay so the anthurium um, that i uh showed you it just it had like some insects on it and i had to treat it uh the way i did it was by using neem oil and then i washed the leaves rinsed them off with water daily and then sprayed neem oil on them daily and you had to keep uh you know just like rinsing the leaves with water and uh spraying neem oil on them and then eventually like the little insects there were like little tiny white insects um they weren't fuzzy or anything they were just like yeah i'm not sure what they were uh and then i also uh watered the soil so when i was watering it i put some neem oil in the soil and then that also helped uh you know you only did that once though because you don't want to like if you have plants and you have like insects issues then i really recommend using neem oil and uh also like rinsing the leaves off daily and then spraying neem oil on it and also like i said um if you're going to be putting neem oil in the soil then just like doing that only once uh and just once a month or i only did it once for one month and that's all really that it needed so um it just depends on how like how many pests it has the gloriosum this is the newest leaf that it has this one also had the pests the white insects i also cured it with neem oil uh, and that really did help and now it doesn't have it and then this is the other leaf that it has this is an older leaf that it has and it is yellowing there so eventually this one will yellow but and then down here i did notice that it's having new growth as you can see there a new growth coming in new leaf and then this plant yes as you as it's you know like it was growing large that it actually uh like tore the planter so i have to like replant it uh, in, <laughs> in a new planter so yeah i just kind of like the leaf was growing this way so i did that to the planter so this is just how it looks like so i have to replant it and there's the new growth so i have a prickly pear cactus down there just growing and everything um as you can see it's just there and it has a bit of new growth as well so the sage sansevieria as well which is just like loving being on the windowsill and having a lot of new growth i have like a propagation uh tubes and i have this philodendron which is uh from the plant that i showed you that you know got really bare uh it's like the micans velvety leaves and then i have all of this propagating uh, as well so that i could replant it so this is how it looks like this is uh an, another uh mikan's philodendron with velvety leaves i really love the color of the new leaves when they grow because it just looks it just reminds me of autumn and like the color is really yeah i just love it and yeah that's a new leaf and then the vines growing as well um uh, yeah so we've got this Mikan's philodendron and also in my greenhouse i do have a few uh 
alocasias and colocasias that I got. The large monstera that I have, a lot of the older leaves have it yellowing, uh, you know, like as there. And then I hope that it browns and then it just stays green, but I'm not sure. You know, like this one also has it there. I was watering it every seven days uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, but I think it just needs water every five days. So I've been kind of like seeing after five days if the soil is dry so that I can water it. And of course, this one's, uh, these leaves are slightly yellowing there as well. And it does, and this one, and it does have some browning. So this is actually the new leaf that it has uh, there. It's like the newest leaf. So this one's healthy. There it has new growth, but it hasn't really started to grow yet. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this plant updates video. Uh, comment which plant was your favorite if you'd like. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more planty videos. Subscribe if you feel inspired to. Thank you for watching.